Hello there and welcome to my channel. Today marks the start of a new project. Now we've just finished this project which is a full upgrade of a 3018 CNC router which I think is probably the best start if you were interested in CNC routers or lasers uh, because I bought a, a, a 5.5 watt laser with this as well uh, plus I bought uh, a 300 watt spindle motor or little rotor motor um, which I upgraded this to and also the power unit that supplies it and I put a third rail over the back and I made some 15 or 16 videos here <laughs> that you can have a look um, through every aspect of making this all the upgrades and um, how to use it why I did that is because uh, you know I was getting lots of emails from people saying um, well we'd like to get into CNC routing and or laser work uh, but it's all too expensive well you can get into it for less than 350 bucks I've thrown a little bit more money at this uh, another probably hundred and fifty dollars to upgrade it to make it you know make things like uh, you know 3d carving in hardwood which it will do now and also nice bit of uh, laser etching work which it will also, oops, which it will also do okay as a result of me doing this and like I say I, I would recommend this as a good starting point for you to teach yourself with free programs as well uh, how to operate uh, a CNC rotor and or laser and um, you know get used to using the, the using the programs that support them and also putting it together and learning what makes them tick so while I was doing this um, a lot of people emailed me and also in comments saying oh we like this but we would like something a bit bigger and more substantial um, and we'd like to make it ourselves so that's what this next series of videos is all about I am going to design and make a CNC router that you can really do something with a small um, version with a table size probably about as big as as this table this is sat on um, about 450 millimeters by 450 millimeters about 150 millimeter in Z and it's going to be fairly solid um, and I'm going to make it in such a way that you can make it at home uh, using you know sort of fairly simple tools so the way I'm going to design and construct this uh, CNC router is I suppose you would call it a modular unit uh, because the the Y and the X axes will be identical okay in other words the makeup of them will be identical um, so you're only actually making one design <laughs> I'll show you a little bit more about that in a minute um, and uh, yeah it's going to be fairly easy easy to make uh, you know you just require you know a reasonable set of drills you could probably do it with a with a cordless drill and uh, files and hand to general hand tools you know 
Um, but to make it here, I'm going to use the machinery I've got. Uh, but I will demonstrate some handwork as well. So um, I've just received over the last uh, two weeks, and of course it's been uh, six weeks coming because of uh, COVID, um, some parts that we're going to construct this with. So we'll just move over to the uh, my workbench over there and we'll have a look what we got. Make it a bit of a mess of this, but it uh, comes packaged well. Oh, blimey. That's one bit. Excuse me while I unpackage this. Okay, we'll get into this now. Oh, what have we got here? Okay, a couple of bearing blocks. a pair of 300 millimeter uh, roughly a foot linear round guide rails so this is for the the Z axis okay and of course they're fully supported with solid aluminium linear round rails now I've chosen linear round rails for this build because they're less than half the cost of linear square rails and really for a CNC rotor of this caliber there is no advantage at all having linear square rails so linear round rails is sufficient and of course I've got four bearings Ooh. of which that is one come on you little devil Come out. There you are. Well, that is a linear round rail bearing carriage. And it goes on there like that. Okay. Beautiful. Feels lovely. These don't fall out either. In other words, the ball bearings don't fall out. They're totally captured in like a nylon. Which was nylon? I think it's nylon. Nylon or Teflon. Um, How's it? You'll have to excuse the aircraft that's buzzing around because it's Saturday morning here, and of course. Biggles and the rest of the aeronautical club have their <laughs> aircraft up buzzing around. So I've got a film in between sort of thing. But never mind, we'll another set of bearings here, haven't we? Here we go. So four bearings and Said a lot. There we go. There's a couple of um, biplanes that buzz around here. That's um, not sure what they're called. 
But they've got um, rotary nine cylinders on. That's what you can hear. I mean, beautiful engine, all of them. But not while I'm filming. Okay. Well wrapped. Oh, look at that, lovely. Beautiful. More. And these should be somewhere in the region. Here we go, 600. So he's a 600. So I've got three sets of these. Uh, so these are going to run um, a pair, you know, two on, shall we say, there's going to be two on the uh, X axis uh, and t four, so it's two either side, on the Y. It just, um, using them in pairs and not singularly, um, not only gives you twice the amount of rigidity, but it stops the tramping effect. If you can imagine, you know, you've got you've got two running like this, and you've got a you know sort of a, a, a support here. It stops the tramping if you have two. All right, so you've got four bearings and two of these. It just stops the the moving around which is what you want. You know, a lot of people use um, single ones. Um, in some cases they're okay, but in the majority of cases I have found that the, um, you know, if you're going to do a job, if you're going to make something like this of this caliber, um, you know, it's not costing you too much extra to, uh, to put these in pairs rather than singular. It wouldn't work at all in the the X or the Y, uh, but I'm talking about what some people use on the uh, sorry the X and the Z. It wouldn't work at all, but some people use single rails on the Y. Well, we're going double on all axes. To make it as rigid uh, for a you know a certain sort of price point, okay. Now I'm going to try and do this complete build for less than a thousand dollars. Now let's be reasonable about this. If you go buying uh, a fairly substantial 6040, for example. For a substantial one, one that you can really do something with, you're going to be paying $3,000. You're not going to be paying $1,500 or $2,000. You're going to be buying a toy. And I was telling you quite bluntly. So that's another reason why I'm doing this build. To give you a chance to get something that you're really going to be happy with and building it yourself. You know, you get to understand <coughs> everything about it. And if you look at some of my past videos, not only uh, did I put the uh, 3018 together, CNC router, but I have um, designed and manufactured um, upgrades from uh, manual machines to CNC machines with a lathe and a CNC mill. So, you know, I've done this many, many times. And uh, of course, all those videos are available on my channel. You may enjoy them. So, there's three pairs of those. And of course, one pair of these for the Z. So it's going to be a fairly substantial machine. Now, I'm going to tell you, now right from the very start, 
all of the detailed information of parts, pricing, what I paid, and I am not affiliated with any manufacturer or reseller. Now I'll go into that more detail in, on a, another video. Because don't buy from a reseller, go straight to the source. You'll get them nearly half price. Okay, let's move on. Okay. This is the next lovely little package. It's like Christmas Day, isn't it? And of course, we have Open this and show you. Beautiful. And these are 500 millimeters long. So the rails, sorry, rails over there are 600 millimeters long. These are 500 millimeters long because I want these totally enclosed, including the motor, okay, in the within the rail area. Uh, and what I'm looking for really is between 400, right about 400, 400 in the Y, 400 in the the X and about 150 in the Y something like that maybe 450 but uh, that's what I'm looking for that sort of area because if I just grab some of the things I've made most of my work is this size lovely 3D 3D carving. Look at this beautiful one. This CNC router that I'm designing and going to make will make these. Alright, so you know if you wanted to make them and give them as birthday or Christmas presents, it'll do it. I suppose uh, you know if you wanted to start yourself a little side business, it would do that as well. So, this is another little so there you go that's a flexible coupling with a neoprene center um, these you know the any amount of flex or pack flesh that you make get on this coupling uh, because this is a decent coupling um, you're not going to see it at all not even worth worrying about uh, I bought these actually as a if I can get it open Ooh. there we go I bought these as a complete set. Okay, when I say a set, that's the the screw, the the ball nut, the coupling, and the uh, I think these are what they call angular contact bearings. In other words, they don't allow the shaft to move around at all. And uh, they come in mounting blocks. So it's, you know, it's less work for you to do. And, you know, for the price, they're very reasonable. Okay, that's the nut that goes on the, the end. 
and this is a dual that's a dual bearing in there angular contact bearing okay with a multitude of holes in it so it gives you a, a variety of ways of uh, mounting it down um, and of course the structure of this is going to be you know aluminium okay so this gets sort of mounted on so there's just really quite a bit of drilling and cutting and filing but that's all it is you know these are all made for you uh, in the other videos I've made these myself and you know with the the feedback I'm getting is oh it's good you know it's lovely done a lovely job but it's all too hard making them yourself so you know you buy them I mean this I think this worked out to be about um, I think these pair of bearings worked out to be like oh, I think it was less than fifteen dollars so it's well worth it so we'll put that away so I've got three of these and I've got a 250 millimeter as well for the, for the Z. Put that just in another way. Put it back in its box. And we'll try and move on. Uh, incidentally, I don't know whether I mentioned or not, um, all the information. Um, in detail about the parts, what I paid, even down to the part numbers, um, sizes, uh, drawings for the entire build for everything is available on or will be available on Patreon. Of course, it won't be available in one lump because I'll be you know making it as we go and designing it as we go so you know it gets put up in sections uh, and just a warning too that um, uh, this just uh, hasn't happened just to me but uh, patron has put something in place like if you become a patron uh, you wouldn't be allowed to view or even download any of the things on Patreon uh, until you've made at least one payment because people have been pledging downloading all the plans and the drawings and looking at everything you know on Patreon and then declining and walking away so uh, not a very nice thing to do so patrons put a stop to that and as a consequence we all suffer as in you know if you join at uh, you know sort of something like the fifth or the tenth of the, of the month you've got to wait until about the second of the next month before you can actually log in and see everything or download anything at all but um, I suppose that's life these days isn't it so all available on patreon so we'll put this away and uh, move on to the next thing this is one of my favorite parts and that's the electronics and the stepper motors so um, like I say, I've built quite a few CNC machines, not just you know, rotors and, and uh, mills and things like that, but other machines, robotics and what have you. So um, there's a lot of work that goes in 
you know, to to calculate out. Good, lots of filling in here. To calculate out um, what you know, power and torque is required uh, overall to do a certain job. Of course, I've applied the same should we say thinking or technology to designing this and um, I'll just take these out a second these are the drivers four because we're gonna have four stepper motors on this all right there's gonna be two on the y-axis one on the X and one on the Z you know, to We'll come to that in a minute. God, why do they package this well? Okay. These. Small, aren't they? Small on size, big on power. This is the largest NEMA 17 that you can possibly get okay um, it's more than man enough to do the job this believe it or not will actually develop two Newton meters okay I'm not sure how many ounce inches that is I think it's somewhere in the region of 200, 200 ounce inches or something like that. You wouldn't hang on to this with your hands. It'd twist your wrist up pretty well. Um, look, the torque on the, and it's got four of these, obviously. The torque on these that you're going to put through those, oh, incidentally, the, uh, the, um, The ball screws are uh, 12 by 4s, alright, so they're, they're 12 zero fours. So that is 12 millimeter uh, in diameter, at the largest diameter, and um, 4 millimeter pitch, okay, so one full revolution will take the carriage 4 millimeters that way, whatever direction. Um, and of course these are more than sufficient to drive those uh, and you know this I'm building this to actually machine aluminium as well not just wood it'll do aluminium so that's the step motors now then Drivers. These are fairly new on the market actually. Not plastic, all aluminium body. And these are going to be mounted on an aluminium plate inside the controller. I'm going to make now, got a big surprise for the controller. And uh, I'll come to that at the end of the this little video. Now then, so four of those beautiful little things. Okay. Now I opted for um, a fairly high power output I can get it in power supply now this particular power supply is okay for all regions it's a switch on the side here that you could you can switch it to 230 or 220 230 or 220 um, volt AC main supply 
Um, and this particular unit is a 24 volt. Uh, you know, the, the stepper motors, uh, maximum voltage is 24. Uh, but this is a 14.6 amp supply. So in other words, it will run, um, it'll run all those stepper motors at full load, um, plus a little bit extra. Um, now that little bit extra, I may use it to power a device that I'm going to show you at the end of the video. Uh, or I may use a separate standalone power supply. I haven't decided yet. Okay, so that's power supply for it. And put that away. And now we'll move on to the spindle. Spindle! So this is what I'm going to be using. I, I've ordered it. I ordered it about three weeks ago, so it's probably going to take another three weeks to get here, but I don't need it probably for another three weeks. So it should arrive just in time. Okay. Uh, let's make it a bit bigger for you to see. There you go. Now, I use the same company that I, I bought the uh, 300 watt uh, spindle for the 3018. This one is 800 watts and it's a 110 volt DC uh, motor and it will run out to 20,000 RPM which is you know now we're getting in the realms of a decent bit of kit um, ER11 collet with a full complement of collets which I think is up to what is it about five sixteenths of an inch, something like that, which is you know, seven or eight millimeter, uh, all the way down to you know sort of one millimeter, which is about a um, what is it, a twenty fifth of an inch. Just so for those of you who sort of are used to inches, I, I sort of tend to give or try to give um, imperial and metric, you know. But uh, <coughs> to give you some idea of size, um, one millimeter is roughly about forty thousandths of an inch. Okay. Um, so there you go. With a power supply. Now the only job I have to do with that is give it a separate earth. Okay, you know a lot of this sort of stuff comes in from China, and it um, they don't require earth over there. God knows why, but uh, there you go. Um, so this, as it comes, wouldn't meet any sort of modern day standard of safety. So the first job is with that. Uh, before every gets plugged in is to, to you know, bring it up to a standard where it is electrically safe um, so that's that's that but you know general engineering of this product is pretty damn good other than that um, so it comes you know with a motor housing as well uh, I already have one that I didn't use so just to give you a rough idea of that size well there's one okay it's uh, solid aluminium really good 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 kit you know so like I said I've used this company company before um, for the little 3018 
and um, you know it's good can't grumble okay now I've done a lot of research you know not just over the last few weeks but years um, on control for CNC machines you know I mean like little 30, 30, 30, the little 3018 here runs on Gerbil and it uh, it runs okay you know it's good for a start and it uses an Arduino board as the electronic control it works it's fine you know um, my other machines I've always used Mark 3 which is PC based and you know bang for buck it's pretty damn good so for the past four years on my laser I have been using what is known as an offline controller in other words it's not pre PC based at all it's got a computer built into it and I never had a moment's problem does exactly what you want it to do never complains so an offline controller like this and this is one for, for a laser too this is a um, You know, this is a, a color screen that I plan to update my laser with. Um, this has got a lot more buttons on it too. And this combined with, well, this is really is the brain. All right, so you have the control panel and the brain, which is somewhere else in the, the, the laser. Um, controls the laser you know you sort of you do your um, you put your your G codes together okay in the software in your computer save it on a um, USB drive and stick it in here and load it into the memory of this which is inside here which is normally you know a couple of gig um, and you control the laser via these uh, buttons and off it goes. So it's a laser. Well, you can actually buy these for CNC machines too. Um, but, you know, there's, um, you, you know, there's varying different types. And one to do you know 3d machining like I do 3d carving they get quite expensive um, you know you could go to a professional you know you can spend two or three thousand dollars you know but um, for this build it is solely for you know amateurs but I wanted a controller that's going to be reliable and one that can support you know, um, milling or um, laser, I'm uh, not sorry, milling or um, a lathe or a CNC router because I plan to partially move away from Mark 3 because, uh, you know, they're all getting sort of too greedy. You know, Mark 4, um, you know, you buy the the Mac 4 board, which is very similar to this, uh, that you know you hook up to your Windows 10 PC, which now that's a good thing. But there again, you've got to buy, you know, either a, a tower and and a monitor or a, you know a, a laptop and run with it, and then you've got to purchase the program which is 
200 US dollars and you can only use it on that machine that you download it to. Of course on Mac 3, once you have it and you pay for the license, you can put it on a dozen if you want to. Um, but that's all gone away. And of course Mac 3 only works up to I think Windows I think the very very uh, Windows Vista machines uh, Windows 10 it won't work on a genuine Windows 10 computer at all because uh, it is 32 uh, bit based um, I mean some computers you know that were Vista you know were updated to uh, Windows 10 it will work on those because they are 32 bit based or so they have a 32 bit arm or leg as it were so you can run it on those but you know everything's getting old now so I mean eventually Mac 3 probably fade out I mean I've got computers here that last me another 20 years I suppose but I'm catering for you guys. So I have found a decent controller. Now, there again, all the information of pricing and where I get my parts from are available on Patreon. Okay? So, let's make it a little bigger. Okay, so there it is. Don't worry about the Chinese writing in here, okay, because within the settings of this offline controller, it's a setting that you can choose many different languages and it changes that to English. Okay? These are not well known yet. Now, I'm going by the specifications of the model. It's very, very highly specified. Um, you could use this on an industrial machine. Now, why I went for this one is a number of reasons. Internally, there's a, this is a computer, okay? So, inside the internal memory of this is 8 gig. On these things, you're lucky if it's 2. Lucky. 8 gig. Okay, which is expandable to an additional 32 gig. Okay, which is huge, really, for one of these things. It works the same as Mac 3, it has all the features of Mac 3 plus because this is five axes and it will run the five axes all at the same time, flat out. It's a very powerful unit. Um, and here's the five axes, so it's got X, Y, Z, A and B. Um, you can control the feed and the speed, in other words in percentage terms you can raise the uh, feed rate up to same as Mac 3 and also which is also important you can raise the speed spindle RPM up as the programs run it so you know as you can with any professional um, electronic control device. That's what this is. Um, 
Now I put I purchased this myself. I am no way <clears throat> I have no affiliation with any company whatsoever uh, to do with uh, you know CNCs other than uh, you know you all know uh, Cavco Atco and uh, you know those type of programs like uh, um, Autodesk uh, you know I am affiliated with them okay because they are the best so this company I I didn't even approach them I just went online and found the best deal I could now you've got to be very very careful because these right are priced at 800 US dollars I picked up mine for 350 with uh, an MPG which is a manual pulse okay input you know for five axes that comes with the particular unit that I purchase for 300 for 350 dollars so uh, I know I did not purchase mine from a reseller now that's another thing too you see all these fantastic prices on eBay and everywhere else most of those are resellers they are Chinese groups of ordinary people who go into a manufacturer buy a 50 or 100 of these units and they sell them for about three or four or five times the price that they paid on eBay posing that they are the seller the manufacturer in fact they're not so you've got to be very very careful and another thing too I've noticed I've actually got stung a little on several of the things that I've just bought from China because of Covid and as a result of the Chinese government attacking um, other nations like Australia um, you you know you see the price and you think that's the price that you're going to pay and you go through the rigmarole of giving all your car details and purchasing and then right before you come to purchase they whack you with 25% tax because that's what they're doing now so be very careful of that unfortunately you know you can only get these from China the Chinese government knows this and now as a result of I suppose them falling out with uh, like the American the European and and uh, Australian governments you know they're just penalizing us with a 25% tax and it's going to go further I think um, so that's not very nice um, you know <laughs> what can you say um, because up until a few weeks ago I can't think speak for other nations but Australia and China had uh, an open uh, sort of relationship with buying and selling and there was no tax involved that's all changed and uh, so if you you know if you're going to buy a CNC rotor machine of you know whoever you know and it's advertised for five thousand dollars well you're going to pay another after after paying the the freight on top of that and and everything else you're going to pay an additional 25 percent now I mean they're cutting their own throat really because now it puts them out of contention 
really uh, on, on a lot of things and it's cheaper to buy American <laughs> really or Australian for that matter so uh, anyway we've sort of gone off subject a bit here that's me just spouting off I suppose I just don't agree with it it's wrong so this is the unit I've purchased and it should be here in a uh, three four five weeks maybe not sure but uh, I've given myself plenty of time because it's going to take me about five weeks to get to a point where I need this and uh, of course you don't need uh... incidentally yeah one of the things I bought it for one of the things I bought this particular model for was not only the internal brain and its ability and speed and monitoring, okay, is full colour screen, that's seven inch screen. It's one that I can see. This is a, I don't know what it is. <laughs> There's something with inches. There's a four inch screen. And look, I've been managing with a four inch screen okay because you're reading it like this, you know. That's a seven inch screen, I'd be able to read that, you know, six feet away, no problem at all. Um, and it may be some mechanism where I can take a feed from this and put it to a, a screen, don't know yet. Um, we'll, we'll work that out. Um, but it's, you know, it's plenty big enough for, for, for me. I mean, I'm not as blind as a bat yet, but <laughs> um, I, I, I'd be able to see it just fine. Okay. So, that's that. So all in all, it's going to be a substantial modern CNC little router that you can really, really do something with. Now, just because I'm using high-powered NEMA 17s doesn't mean to say that uh, you can't use you know, NEMA 23s if you want to, you know, sort of, I, I wouldn't go to the big ones. Um, you know, you don't need any more than about um, two Newton meters at all, which is about, uh, about uh, 200, 200 ounce, was it 200 gram or 200 ounce inches? I think it's 200 ounce, in, ounce inches. Um, like I say, you know, it'll twist your blooming arm off. That's quite a bit. You don't need any more than that for this size and for this duty. And incidentally, I'm going to call this build, this, this router, uh, the MIDI. Okay? For medium duty. So uh, I hope you enjoy the MIDI. CNC router build and I hope you come along for the journey. It's going to be about 15 to 17 videos because I try to show you absolutely everything that you will need to know if you want to copy what I'm doing. And of course if you want to download the plans and specifications and information then it's available on Patreon. So thank you for joining me and I hope to see you again next time. Uh, I do have to go uh, at the beginning of the week to my local aluminium stockist and to choose some appropriate material. Um, it's probably going to be six millimeter angled 
uh, plate aluminium. Um, doesn't need to be any thicker than that. Um, of course I am building two. <laughs> I'm building two CNC rotors because the uh, you know this is going to take me uh, a month or so uh, but hopefully this side of Christmas I'm going to be starting a bigger one which is going to be th uh, 13 a meter by a meter work area and about 200 in the Z so uh, probably won't start that one until after Christmas though uh, but that's coming in the pipeline too. So a uh, little bit of extra news there. And we'll see how this new controller performs. Uh, now I have said in previous uh, videos too that uh, the control mechanism on the bigger one I thought I was going to go to Mac 4. And I may do. Uh, but if this new controller works out the way I think it's going to work out, I might change everything to these type of controllers. You know, because it works out damn sight cheaper in the end. You know, really cheaper. Um, because I don't like the way that uh, some suppliers of should we say, you know, sort of computer programs like Mac 4 are behaving. I think it's wrong. Mac 3 was all right. Mac 4, money hungry. Don't like the way they market it. Anyway, that's my personal thoughts. So, I hope you come and join me for this build, which uh, will be starting this week and uh, getting down to brass tacks with making the frames and uh, starting to build it. So, hope you've enjoyed it. Thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, if you would like to, become a patron. So, bye for now. Mm -hmm.